I said, that suits me fine. <laughs> I said. So me and another man there, it wasn't Ruben that time, another man that worked there, we went into business for ourselves. Uh-huh. And uh, we, uh, we uh, immediately, we uh, took away so much of his business <laughs> they, 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 he was begging me to uh, come to come back, yeah. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't have gone back that time. But the fellow that I had that uh, I took as a partner, he happened to be a married man, and he needed more money to live, and so he says he'll take care of the cash. And Saturday night comes around, he says uh, I'll take the, I'll take the money home, I'll count it up, and then I'll come back Monday. I'll give you, we'll, we'll divide the profit for the week. Monday comes back, he forgot the money. <laughs> Tuesday come back, he said, I'll give you so much, so much comment to you, but I said, I'll, I'll give you a, a part of it and I'll give you the other the rest of the week. I let that go on for a week or two and I said to myself, listen here, brother, you can't do that kind of monkey business with me. Here I'm being offered a job by the same boss to come back to him for 15 or 18 dollars a week, and here I'm working as a businessman with him for three, for, for three, four dollars a week. <laughs> he couldn't get along without me, so we went out of business. Hmm. We went out of business. How did we go into that business that time? We didn't have no money to go into that business, but there was a man in the frame business, in the picture frame business who was competing with the boss that we were working for because they were also selling frames. Mm -hmm. So I said, we, I went down there, and we, me and this fellow went down there, and we induced him to, to give us the money to open up a uh, factory. And uh, he can call this place in his name, mm -hmm. yeah. you see. And, uh, he, and these people wouldn't have to go to him to buy frames. He can come to us. You understand? Mm -hmm. And get the uh, enlargements made, and buy the frames by uh, by 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 the people that adva that advanced me the money. Mm -hmm. So I had nothing to lose. I had not. I had no investment there. I, it was a good go. It uh, that business ran along for about six months that way before I before I dropped him. But I think that he's he's stealing. So I said, hey, "How old? I'm listen." And uh, then I went back to work for these people. The first people? For the first, very first people, and they were glad, and they, they respected me from there on, because then business got bad in general, business became bad, what and they couldn't uh, maintain it because they had to have men working for them to produce the work, you see? Uh -huh. So they, uh, I, say, they, they say, I, says, I said to them, look, if you want to sell the business, I'll buy it off you. So I, so, I, so I bought the whole business off him for $100 and, $150. No kidding. Yeah. All the equipment and everything? The equipment and everything that I had, and we moved it, and I moved it over to another place, where at that time Reuben was together with me already, mm -hmm. and we worked together. What year was that? That was, let's see, that was about 1907. So when did, yeah. you, when did you go to Milwaukee? After you started I'm the business? Away, I went to Milwaukee in 19... Oh, and so what did you learn when you went to Milwaukee? In Milwaukee, I, in Milwaukee, I went there after I broke up with this fella. You mm -hmm. see, after I broke up with this fella, the first fella. Uh -huh. I seen an ad in the paper, and I worked for these, for these, and I worked for them, and I worked for them. You see, and yeah, so I worked, I worked for them. During the period that I worked for them, and in between the period that I worked for them, and in the period of, um, and before we, before I started the business with this other fellow, we mm -hmm. went into business for ourselves. Mm -hmm. So during that period, I seen an ad in the paper. Photographer wanted the photograph, photographic engraving business, and I wanted to learn the photographic engraving business. So I went to a school about a year before that that was advertising that will teach you how to do photo engraving. So I gave this man $50 and he gave me his, I told him I know this business, I said to him, 
you don't have to tell me anything about wet face process. I know it better than you do, I said to him. All I want to know, how to adjust the screens, how to adjust the screens, and so on and so forth. So all he showed me how to use the screen is a 60-line screen, he showed me, but he never gave me any information on, uh, on the finer screen, you see? Mm -hmm. And he wanted another $50 to go to continue the process. I said, look, what the hell am I going to give him $50? I know that I got the idea of what it's all about. Mm -hmm. Listen, I, and I see this ad in the paper, they want a man in Milwaukee. So I write them a letter that I'll, uh, if they send me the car fare, I'll come to Milwaukee. Mm -hmm. So they said they don't send me the car fare, but they send me, they tell me, they tell me the job is what pays twenty two fifty a week. Well, that was a lot. A lot of money. And I should come out. So I said to myself, well, all right, what have I got to lose? It, it cost about $18 to go to Chicago at that time by the train. So I went to Milwaukee, and I came there, and I went to that place there. I told them I, where, where I am. They asked me where, where I came from, what I was doing. I told them. I know, the, I know, the, I know how to operate the, the, the photographic part of the business. So they said to me that time, well, okay, then go home and get dressed and wash up because after riding 36 hours in the train, <laughs> I looked the color of that, uh, <laughs> that uh, uh, red tape recorder. <laughs> Those days the trains went, went sm uh, soft coal yeah. and every time they opened the door, the smoke so, ran all through yeah. the train. Wow. So I went there to see, and I said, and he said, get washed up, he said, and come back, he said, and watch the boys work, he says, and uh, said, and get acquainted with the place, and come in the following night, and he put me on the night shift. But during the day, while I was in the place, one of the boys says to me, what screen do you use for a, a 120, uh, what distance do you use for a 120 screen? You see, the screen has to be a certain distance away from the flat from the plate, according mm -hmm. to the type of a screen. The the cost of the screen is the farther it's away. Mm -hmm. The finer the screen is, the closer it must come to the plate. Oh, I see. Yeah. So I said to myself, Jesus, I don't, I don't, I, I, what am I going to tell this guy? I said to him. What screen do you use? What what screen do you what number screen do you use for 120? Uh, what distance do you use for 120 line screen in, the, in this part of the country? <laughs> he says, "Well, we use three eighths." Well, all right. If you use five eighths for a 60 line, four eighths for a for a 80 line, uh -huh. three eighths for 100 to 120 line. So I said, well, oh, I said, we use the same thing. <laughs> we use the same back north. I think I thought probably the, probably the you people being out in this part of the country, it's a temper, the climate is different. <laughs> probably share, make, make, make uh, a chemical change, a difference. So the next day I came in there and they gave me a job that those guys, a couple of those guys were working on and couldn't get a decent negative out of it. They couldn't get a decent negative. He said, well, give it to Mr. Goldstein, let him try it. I said, I'd take a chance, what the hell is it? I knew what distance I had to make and what time it had to take. I knew the timing and all that. I made a negative and I got a very fine negative. They were working on it a, a long time and none of them get a decent negative out of it. <laughs> you see, those, 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 uh, that, that photography is different. You start, it, you, the, the, you start you start to expose it on a small uh, on a small uh, opening mm -hmm. uh -huh. your lens. Then towards the end, you open it wide and give it a flash. Of course, huh. if if you're to harden the the expo the, the, expo the, the the exposure, you know, to give it a little body. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, if it's under underexposed, the negative has no body. You see. So you use the small opening to yeah. get the image, yeah, and then you the use image. the to large get the good, then, then give it the body, you see. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's interesting. So the next yeah. night I come walking in after that, and I hear a rumor going around. Boy, that boy knows his business. That boy knows his business. I said to myself, <laughs> I said to myself, you should. You, as they say in Jewish, you should know. You, you should. You should know how much I don't know. 
it was just a lucky break. <laughs> so I worked there a couple of weeks there at a time. And uh, the boss says to me, how would you like to uh, come in on weekends, on Saturday night and Sunday night? I said, I don't mind. I got no, no particular place to go. I had no family there. I was strange. He says, we pay double pay. I said, that suits me fine. I said, what's to be done? He says, uh, well, you see, we had the paper, the newspaper right across the street, in the Milwaukee mm -hmm. Centennial, one of the biggest papers in the town, town that time. <coughs> and uh, they might have had a negative or two or three that had to be done before the press, before it went to press. Or maybe sometime we'd sit around from nine o'clock, there'd be nothing to do. Mm -hmm. You see? And there were four people there. Mm -hmm. I that made the negative, the man that, uh, that made the cut, Mm -hmm. The uh, exposed the cut, and the man that made the, uh, the, uh, the photographed it onto the sink and got the cut ready for the newspaper. Mm -hmm. By nine, nine o'clock, whatever it was, two or three or four copies, that'd be cleaned up by nine o'clock. So most of the time we'd come in, and uh, supposed to be four or five fellas coming in. One came in, two came in, and it was trouble. So he says to me, the boss, how you care to take the obligation of uh, Saturday and Sunday night, so that uh, make sure that you can get the get the crew together that'll come in with you. With you, I said I think I can manage it. So I know these guys were all drunks, <laughs> every one of them. They like to drink a lot, and I had another boy who came from uh, from Pennsylvania also. He came there as a, as a uh, he, he was he was doing the work on the zinc work, you know, on the photographing on the zinc. And I asked him, look, you want to come in every Saturday and Sunday night? He said, yeah, why not? Because I got nothing else to do. Double pay. So, and then I got a couple of more fellas there that I knew they drink. So I said, I said to him, look, you come in on Saturday night. A Sunday night, and you can have all the all the liquor you want, <laughs> because we used to use pure alcohol. Yeah. <laughs> for uh, I remember what we use. I don't know what we what we use it for, but we used pure alcohol for some papers there. And uh, I tell them, look, until nine o'clock, you stay here, and you don't get a drop of drop of booze. I says to them these boys. But after nine o'clock, I'll give you the key to the stock room and you can go and drown yourself in there. <laughs> I don't give a damn what you do. So I had no trouble. They want, the boss wanted to know how the, how the none of these boys would, none of these same boys would come around, get to come around on Saturday night and Sunday night and, and with you, they're always there. <laughs> I said, well, you got to know, you got to know how to get along with boys. I said, I know how to get along with them. I said, I make them understand that they're obligated to me until nine o'clock. After nine o'clock, I don't give a goddamn what they do. As long as the, as long as the, and that the boss, that was the contract the boss had with the newspaper. Mm -hmm. That they had to have, regardless of if there was three cuts or four cuts or five cuts, that had to be photographed and 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 cuts made and and ready for ready for the press. Well, I had no trouble at all. I never told them that. There was a 50-gallon barrel of alcohol. How much could they drink? <laughs> How much could they drink? Did they drink so pure we, alcohol? Yeah, sure. The 90, uh, 85, 86 proof. What did it taste like? Like it tastes like, uh, like uh, what do you call it? Uh, vodka. Uh, vodka. The same thing. Same thing. Pure alcohol. <laughs> Grain, grain alcohol. They didn't mix it with anything. And uh, they didn't mix it. I don't know what they did. I give a. I didn't. I said, "He's the key. Go and drown yourself." I don't <laughs> give it. But when they left at nine o'clock, when they left at nine o'clock, they didn't. Even, they couldn't even see their way back. <laughs> the boss not, could, to, Did the boss know what? Uh, uh, um, so they drank three drinks, four drinks, five drinks. So they, so they drank a half a gallon between the five of them, <laughs> or a fifth. 
After nine o'clock, we all went down. We all went down to the, the restaurant downstairs, and we had a good time. And I used to get, I used to get, uh, I used to get ten dollars for that for the two nights. You see. Then he said, the boss says to me, Mr. Goldstein, he said, how would you like to become night foreman? <laughs> I had 52 men under me. Wow. I said, well, you, I, can't you find somebody more, uh, more reliable than, 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 than among these 52 boys? And I was the only Jew there. <laughs> all German, all uh, Goyim. And uh, I said, okay. But until 9 o'clock every night, we have to be sure that the newspaper gets everything that they need. From there on, they weren't, I weren't, they, weren't, they weren't responsible to me and I wasn't responsible to them anymore. Because until 9 o'clock, they had to, they had to, every, every man working, they had a list, what he, what he did that hour. Mm -hmm. So after 9 till, two, till 1 in the morning, we worked from 6 to 1, you see? Mm -hmm seven to eight hours. They had to make out their list. As so long as my share, share of it was done till nine o'clock, what they did after that was their so own. So what did you do from nine to one while they were getting drunk and well, wrote no, letters to no, grandma? No, I would watch you. I would, I said, I'd done the photographic part. You uh, understand? Yeah. I, I'd done my share. You understand? And for the rest was up to them. And I, after that, whatever I had to do after that, was pr practically uh, very little photography work because I I had to run off to uh, make, make a proof of each cut after it was made, make a proof. Mm -hmm. They had a press there, a hand press. First time I came there, I never used a press like that in my life. Mm -hmm. I But I've seen how it's done, you see? And I was pretty uh, sharp on those things. But one thing I forgot, that, that press is a handle with a spring on it. And when you, when you press down on it, you put the cut down, the cut, cut down you put the piece of paper on top. Mm -hmm. See, and you press down on it, you've got to leave the handle go back slowly. Otherwise, the whole top of the uh, machine falls apart. Oh, wow. So I let, I don't know, I pull it back, I get, a, I get a, an image. And all of a sudden, the whole damn thing falls apart. <laughs> so one of the fellows there says, what happened, Mr. Goldstein? I said, I don't know what kind of a lousy press that you people have here back north. I said, we don't have press like that. I let the handle go. I said, the whole thing falls apart. He said, this is an old time press. I'll show you how to use it. I said, yeah, I'd like to learn how to use this press. And he showed me how to use it. From there on, I had no trouble anymore. <laughs> you understand? And uh, I knew that when they came down with the press, we'll see, this is the press. It came down on here, uh -huh. you see, on the die, on the cut. Uh -huh. Now, if there was a fraction that didn't uh, catch, that didn't show, then you had to put down a little sheet of paper underneath to lift, the, to lift up the, the, the piece of wood uh -huh. that the metal was on to make an to make even contact. That I understood. He didn't have to tell me that. I could see by the way the way the press worked. And I worked there for six months. Why'd you find the clip? Huh? Why'd you find the clip? Well, that that place. My aim was to get a union, get into the union. You see, mm -hmm. and that place was a, it, during that period that I was there. In that six months, they were the strike there. Mm -hmm. I learned that later. Mm -hmm. You see, and they wanted to get all strike breakers, uh -huh. which they did. So they didn't ask no questions. So after six months, when I was there, he says, and uh, these union men came around to me, and they uh, told me if I will help them to influence, to get these boys to join the union, mm -hmm. that they will give me my union card without being, a, without being a, an apprentice for five years. Mm -hmm. You see, you couldn't get a union card unless you were an apprentice for five years. Wow, that's a long time. I said, geez, I don't want to stay here. I want to go back north because at the time I was, uh, I was in love with mom. I go, I'm I wanted to go home. Mm -hmm. and, if I, and if I get a union card, then what the hell do I have to stay out here? Right. I can get a job back north. So I came back with a union card. 
stuck up at the union office, I'd like to get a job. Where do you come from? I said, I just came from Milwaukee. We got bummed ass sits there. Why the hell did you come back here for? I could have got a job in Minneapolis. They wanted to give me a job for thirty-five dollars a week in Minneapolis. Thirty-five. Duluth, wow. Minnesota. Yeah. I mean, but it was so damn cold. It's so cold there. Yeah, it really is. So I said, "What the hell do I want to go to Duluth, Minnesota for? I can get. I'll get a job in New York." I come to New York. He said, "Well, it's all right. You've done the right thing." He said.